So, you probably didn't even know that you are watching a very, very enthralling football match. And the football match has been going on since May. And the current score of that football match is Sura Ramaphosa 1, Panyaza Lasufi 3. Welcome to the weekly update with me, Mike Sham. Here we are in the State of the Nation looking at what's made the news in the last week. And this is brought to us by Pace Car Rental, where you can go and rent a car and get a discount because you love the State of the Nation so much. All the details are in the description box below. But let's get to the story. Let's get to that football match. Now, I'm sure you, A, didn't realize that you're watching a football match, and B, I don't know if you know that Panyaza Lusufi is a big football fan. In actual fact, as a government official, he was able to buy a controlling stake in uh, the once famous Morocco Swallows football team. I'm sure that was on his uh, declaration as uh, sort of stakes in football teams don't come cheap, but that's not really the point. The point is that we are in the busy experiencing that football match that we didn't even know was going on. And as I said earlier, the score is 3-1 to Panyaza Lesufi. The other one goal belongs to Cyril Ramaphosa. Let me explain. The big story of the past week has been the removal of the Tswane Mayor Salias Brink from the Democratic Alliance. And a lot of the media focus has been on Action SA and Herman Mashaba, who seems to justify the action of switching support from the Democratic Alliance to the ANC. Uh, his justification is that the Democratic Alliance was dealing with the ANC and he felt terribly betrayed, so he went and dealt with the ANC. Well, I've had Herman Mashaba on the show many times. I've had many people from Action SA on the show many times, and they've always been remarkably available but um, uh, this one is not making a lot of logical sense to a lot of people uh, because uh, the idea changes depending on the weather it's either the DA were, made, were about to stab him in the back the DA had stabbed him in the back when he was mayor of uh, of Johannesburg representing the Democratic Alliance the Democratic Alliance is corrupt the Democratic Alliance is doing a bad job, or Salias Brink is doing a bad job in the city of Tswani, even though his deputy mayor comes from Action SA. R enough about it. The point is that Action SA were available. They, in my opinion, are useful idiots in this particular game, and uh, Salias Brink has been removed as mayor. And that's a, that is the story, but it's not the story. The real story is the battle for the soul of the ANC. And why I give this a score is that I think that what has happened since the beginning of the year started to set a tone for what has emerged as the main fight that we need to keep an eye on in South Africa. And that is the fight between Cyril Ramaphosa, Panyaza Lesufi. Right. Two human beings with incredible shortcomings on both sides and great talents. Maybe not for governance, but certainly great talents elsewhere. So let's go to round number one, or the first goal. First goal got scored by Cyril Ramaphosa. How did he score the first goal? Well, he managed to lead the ANC to their worst ever electoral performance, where they lost their majority and went down 17%, from 57% in 2019 to 40% in 2024. A truly dismal performance. But instead of losing his job as president, instead of uh, you know, taking the blame for the fall, he negotiates a government of national unity, so he calls it. Actually, we know there's some dispute as to whether it's a government of national unity or coalition with the DA, which allows him to literally dictate terms, keep the ANC in power, keep the ANC with their levers on, on the most crucial ministerial portfolios, and most importantly, keep the ANC in full control of the money and of the judiciary. So what has happened? No cuts in government spending. Nobody ever getting to face the might of the law for corruption other than people who are already out of the party. So 
Round one to Cyril Ramaphosa for managing to stay in power after he lose, loses power. And he was smiling like a Cheshire cat and really enjoying some really hard-won bargaining. Definitely scored the first goal. But then quite soon after that, within the month, the score gets equalized by Panyaza Lasufi. And how does he do that? Well, he did that in a very, very interesting way. South Africa riding high on the announcement of the government of national unity. A lot of people, a lot of backslapping, a lot of happiness going on. And a lot of deals clearly done in haste. Now, with one of the oddities of our electoral system where we didn't foresee one party not getting a majority, uh, an overall absolute majority, in other words, 50% plus one or more of the vote, we're a little bit weak on our rulings around coalition. So the important bit that our constitution lays out is that the first action needs to be taken pretty quickly within the two weeks of the, uh, with, of the announcement of the outcome of that particular election. And that is that a premier has to be appointed and a speaker has to be appointed. So in haste, before the rest of the portfolio positions can be negotiated, the DA, as the biggest part of, the, uh, of this coalition, they got 20%. In other words, giving, the ANC, giving this uh, coalition more than 60% of the vote, agrees to elect President Cyril Ramaphosa as president of the country, Toko Dediza as the Speaker in Parliament. They also agree to do a similar deal in, in Gauteng where Panyaza Lesufi gets voted in by including a, a DA supporters. Now remember in Gauteng, Panyaza Lesufi did even worse than what the ANC did nationally. And they dropped all the way down to 37% and the DA has 32%. So in other words, the vote's pretty close. But they elect him as the Premier and the DA's candidate gets elected as deputy speaker in Gauteng. And all of this is pending good and understanding when it comes to the portfolio positions. What does Panyaza Lasufi do? He is now the premier and it's the premier's prerogative to appoint cabinet positions in a provincial legislature. We covered it quite extensively in this part, in this, uh, on the State of the Nation. He goes against the agreement and basically offers the DA really bad positions, nowhere near the money. He creates three, as I call them, and there's only one word for it, bullshit portfolios. These are portfolios, Minister of Agriculture in Gauteng, where there is no agriculture, Minister of, I mean, they even put, split a department uh, to give somebody a, a position. Basically, these are positions where you may cut a ribbon twice a year but you're not going to have any real power. So needless to say, the DA in Gauteng puts their hands up. They get no positions. Gauteng belongs to the ANC despite only getting 37% of the vote. They have the top 11 leadership positions out of 14 in Gauteng. One all to Panyaza Lasufi. Why do I give him a goal? Well, nationally the deal has been struck, which keeps the ANC in government nationally. But there were other parts of this deal. They managed to keep Mkonto with Sizwe out of government despite the fact that they got 40% in KZN, so they managed to keep them out of that. They managed to get elected into top positions. So there was a lot riding on this. They do a deal in uh, Itaquini, uh, which, which stops the, the ANC from being cut out of uh, the management of Durban altogether. So in other words, this was just the next step that was meant to go. But... Panyaza Lasufi wins that, scores the goal, one all. The next one was a little bit more controversial, and yeah, I'm taking a bit of a liberty. But as you can see from this picture, Panyaza Lasufi was clearly quite happy with the outcome, and that was the signing into law of the Bella Bill, or the Bella Act as it is now. The Bella Act, we covered this as well in the State of the Nation, is our new basic education um, Amendment Act, which basically gives, takes a lot of the management of schools from school governing bodies and gives it to the hands of uh, the premiers of the various provinces. 
Now, we know a lot about Panyaza Lasufi. We know that he does two things. He has always been education, uh, head of education here in Gauteng. He's also been a great race antagonist. If there's a hint of a racial incident, as long as the perpetrator is white, he's there in a second. My Lord, I've never seen anyone who can clear a diary as quickly as he can. So he clearly has an issue here. Now he gets to decide under the Bella Act as to how education is going to be managed. And there's some contentious clause which admittedly have been suspended at the moment. Hard to see them being changed. In essence... What the way the law is sitting at the moment, it, the premier of the province is going to be able to take a school, let's say that school's an Afrikaans school, saying there's real demand for places. We are no longer going to serve the school only in Afrikaans because the Act gives the premier powers to do that. In fact, we are making this formerly Afrikaans school an English school, and because we need schools in this area, we are flooding it with pupils. And you would take a nice suburban Afrikaans school in Gauteng that used to be a very effective school, getting loads of distinctions with 35 students in a class, suddenly having 70 students in a class. And this is going to happen. And one only needs to look at the photo of the signing into law on the Bella Bill into law as to who was the happiest there. So quite clearly, a lot of pressure being brought to bear 2-1 to Panyaza Lasufi. And the third goal happened this week with the removal of Salias Brink. Now, understand that one of the selling points of the government of national unity was that we we're going to have stability. Many of the metros in South Africa are in a diabolical state, and with that has followed terrible instability. Ten-party coalitions, one little party getting bought out by the other side, changes the, the mayor, votes of no confidence every couple of weeks. No city can run like this. Rubbish not collected in the case of uh, Gauteng, streets exploding, buildings catching a light, water not running through the pipes. It's a disaster. And part of the problem is lack of stability, brought about by changing mayors, whether they are effective or not. Now, by all accounts, Celia Brink was doing a reasonable job in Pretoria, city of Tswane. He had got an improved audit outcome from the Auditor General just recently, and he gets removed. Now, this isn't a commentary about removing the mayor, but it is a commentary around that stability that we were promised with the government of national unity. But Panyaza Lesufi got it done. 3-1 to Panyaza Lesufi. Why am I giving him these scores? Well, in each case, the national leadership of the ANC in the, the, in the sort of guise often of uh, Mr. Fix Nothing, uh, Fakile and Balula saying, no, no, we shouldn't do it, and he does it anyway, and then everybody says we support his action. He's clearly leading the leadership by the nose, and he'll do anything that it takes. Right? In this case, he found, he found Herman Mashaba, who is... I've, honestly, I love Herman to bits, but he's talking like a crazy person. Revenge. People wanted to shoot him in the back. He won't be anybody's garden boy. It's just crazy stuff. His own person was the deputy mayor. But anyway, it worked. So Leo Brinks is out. And the ANC are the biggest party now in the city of Tswane. And together with Action SA, they're going to be able to form a, 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 a a city cabinet, appoint a mayor. And it's going to be very interesting to see. But what is at play here? What is at play here is the soul of the ANC. This leads up to that leadership void as we head up to the next ANC conference, which happens in 2027. Now, remember, it's going to happen in 2027. At that point, the ANC will be a 40% party nationally. That's not going to change because we won't have another election until 2029. But we will have local government election in 2026. And once again, the ANC is going to do terribly. They're going to do terribly in urban areas where these cities just won't do better. They just won't govern better. And who is going to be his biggest challenger? Well, given the fact that Paul Mashatile managed to faint while he was on stage the other day, and he has shown about as much leadership 
charisma as David Mabuza. Into the breach is going to step Panyaza Lusufi. The battle is on for the soul of the ANC and he is trying to become the next leader. And he's going to ride on a wave of popularity with the populist arm, with the communist party behind him. He is going to be the man to beat. Because there is no saying who, would, who, Cyril, who Cyril Ramaphosa would have replacing him. And let's face it, there's a bunch of dullards there. There's nobody there with any charisma. Right? The only one with a bit of power, ha-ha, is the Minister of Electricity. He's the only one who seems to have some energy. But they better bring him along soon if he's going to have a... Because the campaigning has already begun. And this is the campaigning of Panyaza Lasufi. Saying, you see, I don't need to take um, any advice from up above. I'm doing what I want. I am a leader. I am the guy to carry this forward. I am the revolutionary. So what does one make of, of this in terms of uh, the ANC leadership? People like Fakile Mbalula and some of the other senior ministers. Well, you can only draw one of two conclusions. Either they support this or they don't support this. Well, you know, when people tell you who they are, you must believe them. And the ANC has always been this kind of party that doesn't want the country to succeed. They don't want our kids to be clever. They don't. There's too much competition. They don't want people to strive for better. They want people to be dependent on, on government with grants, BE, everything that's government imposed. Right? The ANC will only survive if the dependency remains. They do not want independent people. So there are people within the ANC that are firmly behind this. Just go and listen to any of the speeches that Salim Apaila has made recently. He is the head of the Communist Party. These are people that want to keep the country unimaginative, low um, objectives, low ambition. So there's that part of the party that's definitely going to support what Panyaza Lusufi are doing. Is, these are the people that were dead against the government of national unity. And the reason they are dead against it is they are so scared that it would work. The other side of it says, maybe there are people in the ANC that, form, that, that support the government of national unity. But they are just being quite quiet about it. Well, why would anybody in the ANC support the government of national unity? They are being made to look quite stupid because the ministers from all the other parties are doing so much better than their ministers. But they do understand that if they don't have the government of national unity, the RAND's going to tank. Our inflation is going to move to the realms of hyperinflation. The economy will cease to be. We will hanker after the days when we only had 50% unemployment. We will become another Zimbabwe, but at least Zimbabweans could come to South Africa. They see this coming, and they don't want it to happen here on their watch they will not just see the ANC lose their majority, but they see South Africa heading towards a failed state. Well, I say to those members of the ANC, if that's really, if you fall into this category of the people that don't like what's going on in Gauteng, then do something about it. Say something. Don't just say nothing, because at the moment there's not one word coming out of senior management within the ANC that condemns this kind of action. So, I'm I don't think that this is the end of the world with uh, Salias Brink going from the city of Tswane. I think he was let down by, the, the, by his own party. I said this to him. Where I don't think that they fought for one minute hard enough to try and keep him in, in his position. You've signed a government of national unity agreement. Well, get up your fat behind. And instead of, uh, of appointing people to uh, work for you that are compromised, rather go and speak to the president and say, what's going on here? Get an answer and be transparent about it. That's what everybody wanted. Because you've got to be careful here. Is how long do you think the DA's voters are going to keep on voting for the DA while the DA gets run roughshod over by the ANC? Everything that the DA want, they don't get. And is this all just so that you can be called Mr. Minister, get a fat salary, ride blue lights, 
shake Xi Jinping's hand? Well, it's starting to look like it. It's starting to look like the DA have just become exactly the same as the ANC that they fought, said that they were going to fight against. I'm very concerned, but please see what's happened in the city of Tswane as an absolute open warfare for the soul of the ANC. Good luck. Enjoy your week. Support Pace Car Rentals. Subscribe to the State of the Nation. We'll see you again next week. Thank you.